So if you haven't guessed already, I am a marine scientist and super snapper. Does everyone know what snapper are? Give me a nod if you know what snapper are. Yeah, what a snapper is? Give me a nod if you've eaten snapper. Yeah, is it fish? Yeah. <laughs> It is a type of fish. It is a really cool fish we have in New Zealand um, and around Australia. Um, it's really yummy in fish and chips. Um, and that is my study species. So I, what I'm basically trying to do is I'm trying to work out how snapper from different parts of the country and from Australia look different from one another and why. So basically, imagine if I took a photo of you and using that photo, I could tell where you lived, I could tell who you hung out with and what your favorite food was. And that's basically what I'm doing with Snapper, finding out a whole lot of stuff just from the way they look. So I like to make these talks a bit interactive and I want to get us thinking about how two Snapper could look different from one another. So we have two Snapper. Let's imagine that they're the same length, but they look quite different. Does anyone have any ideas on how they could look different? Just unmute yourself and go for it. Maybe think about some ways that we can look different from one another and apply that to a fish. Yep, I see someone's put their hand up. The size. The eyes? Did yeah. you say? Like the size and yeah. You're quite quiet, but I think you said like the size of them and the yeah. size of their eyes. Yeah. Yeah. So now if we think if a snapper, if one snapper has bigger eyes than another snapper, do you think that might affect the way that they live? Do you think that could affect some things, maybe? If they have bigger eyes, do you think they could look out for predators better? Or they might be able to see fish, other fish that they want to chase down and eat? Yeah. So this is sort of what I'm doing is I'm looking at how the form of an animal, like how how its eyes might be bigger or the shape of it, may help its function, so the way it lives its life. Can we think of any other examples of ways that a snapper form could be different? Have you got any ideas? You can also think in the face area, what else could be different? Shane? Their teeth. Their teeth, yes. And this is a really big part of my research, is I am looking at how their form also interacts with what they're eating. So I see two main different types of teeth. I see sharp teeth, lots of sharp little teeth. And then I see lots of grinding teeth. So big grinding teeth, like the back ones we have at the back of our mouths, our molars. So what I'm doing with my snapper, once I've taken a photo of them and I've done all the measurements on the outside of their body, then I have to cut into their stomachs and I have to take all of the stuff out of their stomachs. Yeah, really gross. I can see some people sque like getting all squeamish. It, um, and that's what I am doing in the lab today. So I have, these are sort of what a jar might look like. So this is a jar of snapper stomach contents. This is what it looks like. If you don't want to look, look away now, but you might be able to see some little tentacles in there. If you look, oh. How do I get the reflection not coming back on it? But there's some gross stuff in there. So I see, who who has any ideas about what snapper might eat? I've sort of indicated about, mentioned a few things. Anyone have any ideas on what stuff snapper might eat? Shane. Other fish. Other fish, perfect. Okay, again, look away if you don't want to look at a, a fish, but I have a fish in a jar here that came from a snapper stomach. All right, this is what it looks like. You can see the tail kind of curled up here. And right down there, oh, the, the screen is being very reflective today, but there's some little eyes down there. Yeah, this is what it looks like. Okay, so we have fish. Now, if we think about their teeth, so we were thinking, we were talking before about sharp teeth and grinding teeth. If you were eating another fish, do you think it would be better to have sharp teeth or grinding teeth? What do you think would be better? Thumbs up for sharp teeth, thumbs down for grinding teeth. Grinding sharp. Okay, we've got a bit of a mix. We find that fish, that snapper that are eating lots of other fish have sharp teeth. And the reason that sharp teeth can be useful, if you were chasing down a fish, 
and you had like blunt teeth that weren't very sharp and you tried to grab onto it and pull it into your mouth, then the fish might be able to slip right out if you had blunt teeth. So sharp teeth can really latch onto the latch onto the fish and pull it into their mouths. Okay, so there's sharp teeth. Does anyone have any ideas on what other things snapper might eat? So they eat soft-bodied things like fish and octopus. What else could they eat? Teachers, do you have any guesses? Uh, my dad likes fishing at the mussel farm, so I want to say mussels. Yeah, mussels. So snapper eat other shellfish, yeah, like mussels and cockles and pippi, and they also eat things that live inside shells, like uh, like hermit crabs. They eat a lot of crabs. Crabs are snapper's favorite thing to eat. Most of the things I find in snapper stomachs are different types of crabs. Shane. Seaworms. Seaworms, yeah, that is perfect. And I have a really good story about seaworms. We're going to jump back to that in one second. But for the hard-bodied stuff, okay, so crustaceans, awesome. So hard-bodied things, uh, sorry, soft-bodied things like fish, we talked about them having sharp teeth. What do we think for crustaceans or shellfish or crabs? Do we think that would be better to have sharp teeth or grinding teeth? Let's see, sharp teeth or grinding teeth? Nice, I'm seeing quite a lot of grinding, but a few sharp. Okay, so I have a question for those of you who think sharp. If you had sharp teeth and you were eating really hard stuff all the time, do you think your teeth would stay sharp? Yeah, they get ground down, and that's why having grinding teeth is better. Okay, so now I have one more one more story of things that fish like to eat. So they do, as Shane said, they eat lots of sea worms. And I mainly work on snapper that are about 30, 35, 40 centimeters. So like small-ish snapper, about the length of a ruler. And once inside a 30 centimeter snapper, I found a 27 centimeter sea worm all in one piece. So this worm in its stomach was like the entire length of the fish. So, and it was all in one piece. Do we think that the teeth shape are important? Do you think that if you're a snapper eating sea worms in one piece, that it's better to have sharp teeth, grinding teeth, or it doesn't matter? What do we think? Yeah, it doesn't really matter that much because they're all eating it in one go anyway. They're not even chewing it. They're just sucking it out like spaghetti. Okay, so that's the diet stuff that I do with my snapper. And that's quite a big time-consuming part of my research. And there's one other thing that I do. Who has any ideas on how I tell how old my snapper are? By their length. By their length. A lot of people think that. But the length changes depending on where they come from. In some areas, they grow really fast, like around Nelson or um, on the West Coast, they grow quite fast. But around Auckland and the Hauraki Gulf, they grow really slow. So a 40 centimeter fish in the Hauraki Gulf might be 15 years old. But a 40 centimeter fish on the West Coast might be seven years old. So we can't use the length. Who knew that snapper had ears? Who knew that fish had ears? Yeah, a lot of people don't think about it, but fish fish have ears on the inside. So when we think about ears, we usually think about like the flappy things we have on the outside, right? But those are just used to help amplify the noise and make the sound louder so that the bones in our heads can hear the can process the noise. These flappy things aren't actually what do the do the hearing. So because sound travels better underwater, snapper just and fish just need the bones on the inside. They don't need the flappy things on the outside. So I have here a snapper ear bone. I'm going to hold this up to the camera. This is what it looks like. Kind of looks like a little fingernail thing. And I have to pull these out of the snapper and I cut them in half and burn them and put them under a microscope. 
And once I do that, I see a whole lot of rings. Who has any idea on what those rings might be used for? If you know how to tell how old a tree is, you might know how to tell how old a snapper is. Well, you just count the rings like, like a tree. When you have a tree, the amount of rings on the tree trunk counts about, tells how old it is. That's what you do with the snapper ear bones. So that's basically all the research that I'm doing. And I'll just talk quickly about how I got into marine science. So in school, I really liked science and I really liked asking questions like what I've been asking you today about how the why a snapper might look the way it is and how that affects its function. So I liked asking questions about why things in the world are the way they are. And from there, I yeah got really into science and got really into biology and statistics. So I took, yeah, I took science and I liked doing some maths. And then when I got to uni, I did three years of marine and environmental science at Auckland Uni. And now I'm doing postgrad studies, which means once you finish your degree at uni, then you stay for more years and you get to do your own research projects like what I'm doing with Snapper. Cool. So I think that's mainly my talk and I'm happy to answer any questions about science or my snapper or anything else. Okay, I'll start the questions off. Sure. The research that you're doing on snapper, mm -hmm. what do you do with it? Sure. So uh, what we're trying to do is how snapper are sort of, how the fishery is managed in New Zealand is they're split into groups called stocks. And in each stock, you should have one population and you measure how that population is doing. And if there's if the population isn't doing so well and there's not many of them, then you fish less. The problem is when we set up fisheries in New Zealand, we just kind of drew lines on a map um, and didn't actually work out where these populations exactly are. So with my research, I'm trying to work out where the the boundaries are of these populations and see, okay, this group of snapper all look similar and they eat similar things and they're from this area and they grow and behave differently from this group of snapper. So that's part, a big part of what I'm doing. And there's also, so some snapper from some areas have deeper bodies than others. So they're basically a lot taller and those snapper are more likely to get caught in the nets um, at smaller sizes than snapper that are thinner. So I'm trying to work out exactly what those differences are so we can maybe get some rules changed on nets depending on the area and the population. So that's some of the, the big things, but there's a whole lot of other um, smaller implications of my research. It's you to being uh, specialized in the study or in marine life? Sure, yeah. So I started out, I really liked going fishing with my dad. I used to love going snorkeling. And then from snorkeling, I started getting into scuba diving. And once I started scuba diving, I was like 15 or 16 when I got my scuba license. Um, so not that much older than you guys. And once I started diving, I went diving at Goat Island. Has anyone been to Goat Island before? It's a pretty cool marine reserve up north. And I went diving there and it was amazing. And there were so many fish. Um, and that place is protected from fishing. And then um, a couple of weeks later, I went scuba diving, like just around the corner where it wasn't protected from fishing. And there was like nothing there. And I was just completely shocked at how, how different the marine environment can look um, when it is and isn't exposed to fishing. And that got me really interested in how um, fishing can affect um, marine life and got me interested in fishery science. And from there, then I, I started um, doing yeah marine and environmental science at university and I got more and more interested in specifically fisheries related and um, related topics. Uh, okay, thank you for that. Another question is, do you think there are more uh, career opportunities uh, in uh, marine studies as for your um, studies you're focusing mainly on snappers yeah so um a big part also part of the appeal of going into fisheries is that there's um very there's good job opportunities in it because 
fisheries are really important in New Zealand. Um, they're a big part of our culture and also economy. Um, and so they need more, they're trying to get more people to go into this field, especially those that are good at maths. If you can, if you're all right at maths or statistics, um, you don't necessarily have to be good at algebra. I'm not very good at that, but I quite like statistics and working out patterns and numbers. And they don't have enough people who are interested in fish and marine science and good at numbers. And so they're desperately trying to get more people into that field actually. And going forward when we, um, when we're facing more climate issues and more environmental issues and things, um, they need more people in the field. It's, it's definitely a, a job space that's that's opening up. The the only downside is that it does take a lot of studying to get there. So I, I have probably another three more years of studying before I um, will properly enter the workforce. Thank you. I appreciate that. And it's good to hear that being good in all curriculum areas linked to that specific studies in marine life. Thank mm. you so much. You're welcome. I think I saw a question in the chat. And yeah, if anyone else has questions that you don't want to um, don't want to say out loud, yeah, feel free to chuck them in the chat. But let me read this. Do you see this as my job in the future ahead? I definitely do. So where I am at the moment, actually, I didn't explain that. I um, So I work for NanoGirl part-time, which means I get to talk to people like you um, and go to people's birthday parties and stuff. But <laughs> then when I'm not doing that, I'm based at Niwa. And Niwa is the the place they do the big fishing trips and work out how many fish are in these populations and determine how much people can go fishing. Um, so I'm working, I'm currently in Niwa's building in Auckland and that's what my, my lab coat says. And this is where I hope to end up. Um, so because I'm based here, I'm already getting to know all the people that work here. Um, and then I'm hoping that once I finish my studying and my project on Snapper, then I'll um, end up being having a job as a fishery scientist here at Niwa. Do I ever get tired of studying this? Um, sometimes, sometimes I do. Sometimes it's really smelly. Like that is a downside of the research that I'm doing is it stinks. When I'm doing a whole lot of measurements on their jaw bones, I have to put their heads in the oven and bake them, which can be quite nice. Um, but I have to do that. And then I also have stomach contents spilling around. And then I have jars of chemicals. And when that all mixes together inside, it can be pretty, pretty gross smelling. And if you're already not feeling too well, and then you're smelling that for, for the whole day, it can get, it can get a bit sick of that. Um, what was my favorite? What was your favorite out of those three fishing. Could you type that question in another way? I might be able to understand it, but I'm not quite sure what you're asking. Oh, I see. Um, I think your teacher has put Niwa's link um, in the chat. Yeah, so you can look up. It, Niwa stands for the National Institute of Water and Atmospheric Research. So they do a lot more stuff than just fish. They do, um, they do lots of climate stuff and weather stuff. Um, what inspired you to become who I am? Oh, that's a great question. Who? Um, I I would say I had some really good teachers. I had a teacher in in school. Um, I think she was my year 10 science teacher and she had done marine science and she had lots of cool photos of um, underwater environments in her science lab. Um, and I really liked looking at those and she got me, I think she was a big part of getting me interested in marine science as well. And then my supervisor. So the research that I'm doing at the moment, I have um, a scientist who's sort of looking after me and guides me um, and he has had a big part in shaping um, shaping my research and my career. So I think my teachers have played a really big part in um, inspiring me and making me who I am. Oh, I suppose also my parents. Um, my parents have had a big part. They are big about conserving the environment and making sure that there's lots of fish for, for generations to come and that our planet um, is trying to make our planet the best place it can be. So they um 
they definitely inspired me too. Um, do I think I can call my or your work a talent? I think I can call it a talent that I can withstand the smells. I think that's a pretty good talent. I'm pretty tolerant of smells now. Um, and yeah, I have to sift through um, all these jars. I can show you again if you want. This is, I have one sample at the moment that I started working on this morning. This is what it looks like. Does that just look like sludge to you? I'll look if I can get it closer. This is just like sludge. And I'd say that that's, that's quite a talent to be able to go through all that sludge and work out um, all the stuff that's inside. So I would, I would call that a talent. Um, what's my favorite type of species? Um, my favorite type of species, um, my favorite fish, um, is this really cute fish. What a lot of people think it might be snapper. And I, I do love snapper, but there's a fish that I think is even cuter than snapper. It's called a two spot demoiselle, if you want to Google it afterwards. And it's about like this long and they're feisty. They're these cute little black fish with two white dots. Um, and they have a part of their rock and they defend that part of their little part of their rock so aggressively and if you're snorkeling or diving and you you like stop and like just want to sort of rest on top of the rock then they'll come up and kind of snap in your face and um i think it's kind of cute that they they try to be so aggressive to something so much bigger than them okay um i work on fish that are about 30 centimeters what is the shortest length of a snapper that we can catch an aotearoa to eat it is a 30 centimeter snapper that's the smallest we can catch recreationally um so yeah from there up um is the smallest and we have that length because that's when um snapper sort of reach maturity and they're able to produce offspring from about 28 centimeters so it means that we've given them a chance to sort of reach adulthood and um have some offspring and then we can catch them um what is the best spot to fish with a bigger snapper in New Zealand? You're trying to get my fishing spots off me. Um, nice try. No, <laughs> the the biggest biggest snapper, um, what well, the most snapper is in the Hodaki Gulf. So right in our backyard um, is where most of the snapper are in New Zealand. Um, and yeah, so there's some pretty big fish if you go to the right spot. Um, I think heading out towards Great Barrier Island uh, where you can get some really big snapper. Um, what are the benefits that I get from this? Um, I get the benefit of knowing that I am I am helping and contributing to making sure, yeah, that there's going to be snapper around for years to come. And that I hope that there's more places in future like that Goat Island Marine Reserve that you guys can snorkel or dive at and see see heaps of snapper. Um, so I I like knowing that what I'm doing um, is making a difference. And I also get to have some fun along the way, um, do some hands-on work. I like that um, in some careers, you know, you just like you sit at a desk all day. But I like that some days I might be able to go out over summer I'm spending a whole month on a fishing trip so from the 3rd of January to the 4th of February I will be on a boat and I won't get the chance to touch land um, for a month and a day so I, I like the chance that I like that I get to do a whole lot of different things um, and that's a big benefit um, do I think my research will pay off in the end I, I think so I'm I'm pretty happy so far in that the career that I'm going in um, and I'm already finding some really interesting results. Um, uh, Summers? So a question I have for you is, um, what college did you, did, or high school did you go to for your studying of um, marine life? And um, you, is there any colleges or schools that you um, suggest for studying for marine life? Yeah, cool. Great question. Um, so I went to a school called Kingsway, which is up um, north of Auckland, still in Auckland, but like near Oriwa or Silverdale. If you've ever gone to Snow Planet, that indoor 
indoor skiing place. It's like close to there. Um, and I went to the University of Auckland and I really enjoyed it. But there's some other really cool places around the country. Otago, um, Otago University, um, which is down in Dunedin in the bottom of the um, bottom of the South Island. Um, they do um, they do marine science and they have a really cool program. And then in Tauranga, actually, there's a new one that's sort of opening up. And it's a really cool one because you get heaps of hands-on experience they're really good I think you will like get chances to go scuba diving and do lots of hands-on stuff and it's quite a small course um it's a it's a really cool um cool one down in Tauranga which is more hands-on than than the Auckland course so I think I would recommend that potentially going forwards as well um have I traveled overseas with my line of work um not not yet not yet. I'm the next few years of my study. I might be doing in America, so um, and I might be switching to salmon because salmon's also a yummy fish that we like to eat. So um, not yet, but I'm I'm hoping to. Um, I saw some other questions that I missed. Um, was maths always my number one subject? Definitely not. Definitely not. Um, I've done lots of other things. I really liked music. Music was a fun subject that I took um, took through like middle school, intermediate, um, and I, what else did I like? I, PE actually, I think was probably my best subject. Um, so math doesn't have to be your best subject, um, but as long as you don't mind it too much. And there's still a lot of math that I, uh, I find hard, but it definitely helps. Um, what? What type of water slash sea do snapper live in? So snapper live in the marine environment, which means they live in salt water. They don't live in fresh water like lakes. They live in the ocean. And they live near to shore. So they're, they're coastal fish. They live in quite shallow waters. So the maximum you'll find a snapper might be 200 meters deep. But most of the time snapper will be less than 50 meters deep which is it might sound deep but when you think that the ocean can be like 14 kilometers deep they're, they're quite shallow um when i research and study about these species am i sometimes exhausted yes i i got up early this morning to get in the lab and i only had six hours of sleep last night because I, I come in at the moment it's been really hard with lockdown I've only just managed to get back into the lab to do some more work but I, I get up in the morning I come to the lab I do work in here and then I go home and I do more work and then I go to sleep and then I wake up and I do it again so yeah I, I you do get tired um, how much do I get paid at the moment not a lot because I'm still a student um, but eventually you can get paid um, pretty all right and fishery science is one of the marine sciences that there's opportunity to get paid reasonably well because those math skills are so in demand so um, there's some opportunities to get paid quite well once you're a senior scientist so you've got to work your way up still um, but to start off with definitely not a lot um, what is my favorite thing about my job I think yeah, what I was saying before about the the lots of different things I get to do. So I get to meet lots of cool people. I get to, um, over the summer, I'll be going out in the boat. I get to do work with my hands in the lab. And then when, when I'm annoyed and sick of doing stuff with my hands and I can do some writing and I can do some math. So there's, there's lots of variation and I really like that. Can I sing for you? I don't think you want me to sing for you. Um, how long do I work for? Okay. Um, at the moment, because I'm studying, um, I sort of get to choose. The more time I put into my research, the better my research is going to be. Um, it's kind of like how long do you do homework for during the week? Um, so it depends a lot week to week, but usually I'm at work about 8.30 in the morning and I'll leave here at about 5.30 and then I'll go home and have some dinner and then I'll probably do another two, two or so hours of emails and admin and writing and things before I go to sleep. So probably like 11, 11-ish 11 hours a day maybe. 
um do did you experience anything scary um sometimes i find some pretty scary looking fish in my snapper stomachs um and i found this fish once called a rat tail fish which is a pretty weird looking fish if you want to google that um and that's a, a deep sea fish and i don't know why but this deep sea fish happened to be in a snapper stomach and they look pretty weird and i've also had some scary experiences when diving like i um sometimes i get nervous when i'm diving and um and yes yeah, so sometimes sometimes diving can be a little bit scary cool that was heaps of questions thanks so much for that guys yeah. um funnily enough i had snapper for dinner i hardly ever have snapper but last night had probably ours was maybe 40 centimeters it well, just fit in the oven um oh nice over a wee bit absolutely delicious the eye is still there i notice um um in my husband's family culture they would eat the eyes i've never been kind of inclined that way but um i think that it's the new movement as well isn't it um looking after our planet means that if we do catch or we need to eat something we eat the whole of it and not just um, part of it to throw away but I did wonder if I could go and find the ear bit but I'm suspecting I might need better um yeah to do it, that. Can, it can be tricky um you might be able to once it's been baked you might might be able to but what I do you've got to um cut with the saw at quite a specific <laughs> angle um to get into it's sort of in a casing um in the skull so it can be a bit tricky to get to um but you might be able to find it if you yeah find a little white fingernail looking thing don't worry it's not yours it's just mm. the fish <laughs> and in terms of coming to school like if we weren't in lockdown is that part of the program you offer um not this program just sort of started up um as a lockdown thing but there is well. potential that yep you can get in contact and you might be able to see some samples in person if i came on in yeah, I would talk to Samantha about that. Okay, just interested. Okay. Oh, well, I'm sure um, we could be here for a lot longer, but I know you're really busy and um, if you're working 11 hours a day, <laughs> I really do appreciate that 30 uh, minutes that you've um, given to us. Um, any students here, could somebody please um, thank uh, Georgia and Samantha on our behalf, please? Go Malili, ka pai. On behalf of um, teachers and students of Mango East, I'd like to thank you for taking up your time to um, teach us some new thoughts of your research. And I hope we've learned something new. And have a great day. Thank you so much. Thank you for all your questions. I really enjoyed hearing them and getting to chat to you. And if you have any questions um, or want to know more about um, the specifics of getting into science or marine science, then um, yeah email your teacher who will have my email and i can answer any questions thanks so much for having me today guys hope you learned something cheers <laughs>